This is a Yamaha DM1000. And this is an iPad. These things were released uh, about 20 years apart from each other, and yet for some reason we can make this control that, and vice versa. But how do we do that? There's no Yamaha DM1000 app on your iPad that you can download from the store. Uh, we have to go through a third party, and that third party is a program called Stereoscope. About six years ago, Stereoscope was put as open source on the internet and basically abandoned, which means that downloading it and getting it to work is a little bit of a hassle. That's why I wanted to make this video to show you how you can make this work with that uh, without sweating too much because it took me about two months to figure out how to make the two work together. So let's jump into it. The first thing you might want to do is go over to the MIDI setup menu. Um, you can do that by hitting the display access and then using the uh, function keys to move over to the MIDI slash host menu. These are the settings that I have. Uh, I could suggest you use them as well. Um, the main thing that I just want to point out is that uh, we do not want to use the USB ports one to three if we're using that for our DAW. Um, we want to use four or higher um, for stereoscope and we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, now that we are on the computer, there are a few things that we need to download. Um, the first, of course, is stereoscope itself. Um, you can search uh, stereoscope, stereo krauts and it should be the first option. I'll also have the link in the description. Um, this is the GitHub. It used to be a paid program, but now it's open source. So uh, technically you could go in here and change the program any way you wanted if you were uh, good enough with coding. Uh, but I am not, so I'm not gonna be doing that. Uh, instead, I'm gonna go over to the side here that says releases and click 3.00 pre-3. Uh, it hasn't been updated in six years. Uh, when we click that, there's a few options. We are looking at the Windows version. I don't know what issues may arise with Linux or Mac, but I do know the issues with Windows. So I'm on Windows, we're gonna go with Windows. When you click that, you'll be downloading <coughs> a zip file. And this zip file has pretty much the entire program in it. Uh, all you have to do is extract this uh, to wherever you want to put it. Um, so I personally am going to keep it in um, program files uh, with my other programs. With Stereoscope installed, we could try to click Stereoscope and start it up but it's not gonna work because there is a major piece of the puzzle here that is missing, which is a Java runtime environment. The program requires Java to run, and the chances of you having the right version of Java in uh, 2021 or later is very low because it is an old version that it requires. You can't use the current version because it will break. So, uh, we need to find a specific version of Java for this to work with. Uh, so, we will search up, uh, I search Java JRE 7, uh, and once again, first link, uh, it works for me. Uh, I'll also have this link in the description. And this gives you just a ton of options for downloads. We are gonna just go all the way to the bottom, and we want Java SE Runtime Environment 7. Even in here there are a bunch of options and uh, you need to be specific with which one you choose. You want Windows of course since we're in Windows but we need the x86 offline version. If you noticed in the GitHub uh, the Windows version was Win32 x86. So we also need x86, the x64 version is not gonna work. Um, we can just pray that Windows won't stop letting us use 32-bit programs uh, at some point. 
So, uh, we will download this version. Uh, we accept and press download. Uh, it, sometimes it says you'll be redirected to the login screen. Um, sometimes it, it doesn't. I, I'm not entirely sure why I've done this a few times. Sometimes I had to log in and sometimes it just let me download immediately. This time it's making me sign in, so you will need to make an account here. It's free uh, and you're probably only going to use it this one time. So you can make whatever you want. I need to remember what mine is. Once you figure out what your username and password is or you sign up, um, signing in will automatically download uh, what we're looking for and we can just click right into that. The weird thing about this is it doesn't matter if you have another version of Java on your computer. Um, we just need to put this specific version of Java into a specific folder on the computer. Um, so if we go back to the stereoscope folder, this is where we want to put our Java folder. Uh, it has to be there. I don't know why, but that's the only way I've made it work. Um, so with the uh, installation for Java, we got to press change destination folder at the bottom left so that we can move our destination folder to be wherever we want it to be. Uh, we have to now click change to change where it goes. And we will find our way over to this folder. Uh, program files, stereoscope, and then we're going to make a new folder and call it Java. So we have that, we'll click next, we'll let the thing install, there we go. And we have successfully installed Java, wonderful. And now we are actually allowed to open stereoscope for the first time. Okay, now we have Stereoscope open. Uh, that's great, but uh, we are not at all done. There are a bunch more steps we gotta go through. So, uh, since we are in Stereoscope, let's just check this out uh, quickly. If you go, you can click any one of these um, and it'll do the same thing as going to File, New Document. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you do. Um, but when you do that, it will ask you for two things. First, the MIDI input port, uh, which if your DM1000 is connected, then it should show up here. If it doesn't, then you need to check if it's connected. And the MIDI output port. And the MIDI output port is where we will be um, putting the iPad. So now we need to go over to the iPad to set that up. All right, we're on the iPad now, and uh, we are just gonna jump right into it. I've already downloaded Touch OSC. Um, Touch OSC is a paid program. It costs five bucks, I think. Um, it's the only bit that you have to pay for in this setup. Kind of a bummer, but if this is what you want to do, this is what you want to do, and that's the only program this thing works with. So um, Touch OSC, we'll jump right into there. And, um, Usually when you first join Touch OSC, you are presented with this screen um, that asks you some questions. I've already used this on another computer to test that this works. So I have some stuff here like this layout that says main control stereoscope. Um, and if I press done, it looks like I've already done it. But this isn't gonna work right now because we're not connected to the proper network. And back onto the computer, we are in Stereoscope and we're gonna click our DM1000. And I'm gonna personally make this uh, four for the input and four for the output. Okay. All right, so here it is. It shows up in this screen. And now we have to click add another dot, dot, dot. Very sad sound. And here is where we should be able to find our Touch OSC on our iPad. We've got two options here, add a new uh, server for a web client on port and add a new to Touch OSC client, which is the one we want. And if you look at the settings on the iPad, 
and the setting shown here, uh, 10.0.0.9 is the local IP address on the iPad, and the port is 9000. Uh, your local IP address will be different, but as long as what's shown on the computer matches what is shown on the iPad. Finish. And there it is, it just showed up. Now back on the iPad, we can click back and done. And now for the moment of truth, we will move the sliders. Here we are at the moment of truth. We've got our DM1000 here, and this is our iPad hanging out kind of sloppily here because how do I make this angle work? Uh, if we first click resync, everything will show up and uh, let's just go over a few things about what we're looking at. On TouchOSC we can see basically all of the channels um, from 1 to 32 uh, all at once. Um, obviously we only have the 16 sliders here um, so we are actually looking at the um, top row here that is 1 through 16. If I decide to move channel 5 You can see that it also moves on the screen. If we move channel 5 on the screen, it moves the slider on the DM1000. Uh, we can also move the uh, master volume, the main mix. You can see that down there. And the same thing on this side. If you do it, you, it will do it. Um, one thing that I've noticed is if I click like here, uh, the thing will turn yellow and it will not move. Um, you do need to move the slider along where it already exists because it can't move it uh, <laughs> infinitely fast on the DM1000 so it doesn't work. Um, so if we want to then look at the channels 17 through 32, we can click that button on the DM1000. Everything moves as it should. And we can uh, start messing around with some of those. There it is. Hello. Hello. Now these ones didn't quite get the memo on where they're supposed to be. Uh, we might be able to press resync, and there you go. There they are. Uh, you'll also see that uh, these things here are either red or not red. This is whether or not the channel is on or off. So if you saw that, that connects to that. You also have some options uh, with the channel strip. Uh, you can mess around with the uh, EQ and the dynamics, the compressor on here that's in the DM1000, you have all of the controls and you can choose which input you're looking at and um, for uh, some things you can use this graphic EQ. I'm not entirely sure if the DM1000 has that capability. And that's about it. Leave a comment down below if uh, you followed the steps and it all worked out. Also leave a comment if you tried following the steps and something went wrong and it didn't work. I went through a lot of trial and error trying to figure out how to make this all work smoothly. So if you ran into a problem, I might be able to help you out with that. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Uh, you can also subscribe. I'm planning to make a few more videos about the Yamaha DM1000 and uh, generally setting up my recording and mixing setup. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.